watch this. He became the youngest school board trustee in Boise, elected while he was still a senior in high school. Well, now that he's off to college, like off to the other side of the country for college, can he still serve on that school board? He says he can, and so does the law. Salmon are an important part of Idaho's ecosystem, but they are so much more than that to the Nez Perce tribe. That connection was on display last night at a sold out screening of an hour long documentary, floating a big idea to keep salmon from going extinct. And it's fair time, and we're there. Well, for many, going to the fair is a tradition that goes back generations. For one man, it's a span he's covered pretty much on his own, but not alone. I mean, he's had his sheep to share in the fun. Serving on a school board has been historically, well, thankless, but also a very low profile gig. That is until the last few years. Still thankless, now kind of threatening, and much higher profile. And despite that, or perhaps because of that, more people have wanted to get involved lately. Those without kids in school and those who are still in school. Shira Rajbandari ran for a seat on the Boise School District Board while still a senior at Boise High, and he won. The first student in Idaho to do it, which is why this next part might not surprise you. A kid with that kind of drive is choosing to go to college. He chose North Carolina to do that, but still has one year left on his term as a trustee. So one North End neighbor posted to Facebook asking, hey, uh, does anyone know when Shiva plans to resign from the Boise School Board? Well, we know, and he's not, because while Shiva is going to college in North Carolina, Boise, Idaho, his parents' home, is still legally his primary residence. Here's Andrew Bartline. Nearly a year ago, Boise School District voters sent a clear message. With the 13-point margin, that I won by, Boise voters, I think, resoundingly said, yes, students deserve a voice. A voice spoken. Yep, I do. Through Shiva Raj Bhandari. Did Shiva win that election, or do you see it as students won that election? I think, yeah, I mean, students, students won this election. High school students, a status Shiva's now not. I mean, every other trustee has, has a job um, or, or something they do, and, and mine is, is college. A college across the country. North Carolina has uh, a lot broader educational opportunities, which I'm looking forward to. Leaving Boise behind, sort of. I am still a resident of Idaho. I'm still voting in Idaho. I requested my absentee ballot just the other day. And legally, he can, Right, says Dr. Charles Hunt. The way these state laws are written are, uh, I think in some cases purposely vague. State law says Shiva does not lose Idaho residency just for leaving Idaho, given his intention to return. The time of absence has no restriction. Who's to say whether an elected official has any intent to return? They can just say, yeah, sure, I have an intent to return someday and not specify the day. Can you say definitively your intent to move back to Idaho? Is that what you intend to do? Yeah, I mean, 100%, I'll be back. I'll be back for Thanksgiving, I'll be back for Christmas, and I'll be back for the summer. Which is traditionally a normal travel cycle of any college student studying away from home. But the status of a home, a primary residency, that's not set in stone. If you move to another state, if you register to vote in that state, if you begin paying taxes in that state, right, these are the kinds of markers of residency that even go beyond actually having a home address and maybe begin to invite some potential court challenges to your office holding. You may now take your seat on the board. So far, Shiva says he hasn't crossed any of these lines and doesn't intend to. Though Dr. Hunt says just because you can legally keep an office doesn't mean you always should. How well equipped is someone to represent a school district, right, or a state legislative district or a state if they no longer live there? Over time, growing out of touch. It's reality. But in a year, Shiva says that's not his reality. I still bring that perspective uh, of, of a student to the, to the school board. I just graduated back in May. I'm still deeply invested in, in our school district. Um, and so I'm, I'm determined to make it work. Well, Raj Bhandari says his work on the board is going to be done virtually, like over Zoom. He says it's not the best situation, but he is fulfilling a promise he made during his campaign to serve his whole term. Raj Bhandari says he has tried twice to propose a policy that guarantees a student voice on the Boise School Board, 
but that has never even been considered by the current board. And without knowing a current student has a voice on the board, Malshiva considers himself to be the next closest thing. Boise School Board, or School District, I should say, they know Raj Bhandari is clear across on the other side of the country attending college in North Carolina, and they told us they are, quote, looking into it, but have nothing more to say at this time. Right, well, if you're into camping, then you know how tough it can be to reserve a spot in one of Idaho's designated state parks or campgrounds. Well, what if I told you there's a program you could be a part of that would open up thousands of other options, not just in the gem state, but across the country? Harvest Host helps RVers and campers connect with local businesses and set up camp on their property. And we're not just talking about any bare spot on the side of the road with a fire ring. We're talking places like wineries, breweries, museums, and farms. And the way it works, a camper pays a membership, about $100 a year, and they could spend the night at different places around the state, around the country, like the Gutierrez family farm in Nampa, for example. There's a caveat with this, though. You do need a self-containing RV because, well, there aren't any RV hookups at these places. And with the stay, the guests will be able to take advantage of whatever that location has to offer. For example, at the Gutierrez farm, you can get tours, get up close to the animals like the goats, the sheep, the cows, and of course the hosts, they get something out of it as well. You know, guests buy things like a glass of Chardonnay at a winery, or in the case of the Gutierrez farm, people can buy meat and other things they grow. So you could possibly be making friends with a cow and then later enjoy it for dinner. It's a win-win. The hosts get it to bring in extra cash, and the guests get a little flavor of a local hidden gem, sometimes literally. Uh, we really like the small farms. John particularly yeah. you know, likes small farms. Uh, they have lamb. Uh, I love to watch the sheep. And so, uh, yeah, it was just um, a nice, quiet place. And the Gutierrez to say they've seen a lot of success in just the year they've been a part of Harvest Host. It's an opportunity that is stepping stone to hopefully expand their business into a venue for events like field trips and weddings. Just make it bigger. All right, well, let's move from hosting RVers to hosting unwanted animals in your fields or hosting music festivals. We've got all that and more in today's 411. Police are looking into a shooting and a possible homicide that happened around 6 this morning in Bellevue near Sun Valley. Blaine County Sheriff's Office says a Bellevue deputy marshal responded to the report of a possible homicide. And when he got there, he ended up shooting at the suspect. That person is in custody and recovering at St. Alphonsus in Boise. The officer also found someone dead on the property. Idaho Fish and Game is trying to keep big game from feeding on crops in the Magic Valley region. That means no more elk hiding out in your cornfields. Well, at least fewer of them. Fish and Game said it is mostly happening in Elmore, Jerome, Blaine, Casha, and Lincoln counties. So how are they keeping the elk out? They're trying hazing, like scaring them away. If that doesn't work, then they'll resort to shooting them. But Fish and Game says they've only had to kill two elk this summer and the meat was donated to local food pantries. Hey music lovers, Flipside Fest is back in Garden City on September 22nd through the 24th, and they just announced the schedule. There are 105 artists performing, with headliners like The Walkmen, The Regrets, and George Clanton. You can headbang to some jams at several stages set up around town. Not into music? That's okay. You can feed your face at food trucks or feed your artistic side with a flea market and art sales. You can find a link to buy tickets on our website, ktvb.com. And that's the 411 on the 208. I'm Abby Davis.
We're expecting to join NBC News live coverage of former President Donald Trump turning himself in at Fulton County in uh, Georgia later on, but we'll see how that plays out. But until then, why don't we check in on the fair? Because you know what is so Idaho? Yeah, that would be the fair. And if you've been enjoying any of these, well, the sunny days, a few of them been some scattered showers with some heavy rains at time. Well, the fair is always the place to be this time of year. And that's where we find Andrew Bartline right now, because I guess Andrew, you got somebody you want to share a story about who's been there a lot in the last few years. Yeah, we're at the sheep barn right now with a friend we just made named Larry. I understand, Larry, you've been here quite a while, year after year. How long has it been? Well, we think 18 years total. 18 years in the sheep barn at the Western Idaho Fair? Yes, sir. What do you guys do here exactly? Troy, let's show them what we're looking at. I've seen more sheep than I've seen in my life. What we do here, we bring our fitted sheep over once a year for this open show. Uh, several exhibitors are here. They bring different breeds. There's wool breeds, there's meat breeds, and then we have a friendly competition between us all. Do you know a lot about sheep, Larry? Uh, we, somewhat. I'm not a real expert, but I know enough. To... I don't want to put you on the spot, but this one Troy's looking at right now. What can you tell me about this sheep? 18 years, we're putting you to the test. What do we know? We know it's a crossbred sheep. It's probably called a DA, which is a Dorset and a Advantage, which is a Dorset cross with something else. And they're still sheep, and it's a black one. It's a black one. Yeah, that, that narrows it down. I appreciate it, Larry. 18 years, what are you looking for? 18 more? What are we looking at? Yeah, I, we enjoy this. My wife and my daughter, we bring them over. We, was over, we showed up here Wednesday morning at 6.30 in the morning, unloaded, set up, and look forward to coming back next year. What brings you back year after year? There's only so much you can do with sheep, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's a ton. This, family, people, you meet friends, your friend, this is like a friend reunion. Is there anything different about this year compared to years in the past that you appreciate and enjoy? Uh, yeah, it's cooler. <laughs> <laughs> well, it helps that we're in the shade as well. I'm not going to complain about that, Larry. It's a lot cooler than it has been. But no, we come here to enjoy friends, family, uh, people we don't see maybe once a year and just have a real good time. Well, I appreciate it. Brian, unfortunately, my IFB came out, so I can't hear what you're going to say back to me till later, but I know you consider yourself a farm guy, I guess. I don't know what you know about sheep. I think I know more at this point, so I think I got you there. Well, yeah, you probably know as much as Larry. I guess if you're not hearing me, I guess I can't ask you because I thought, like, this kind of event was for the kids, FFA, 4-H, that kind of stuff. Larry doesn't quite fit that explanation very well. All right. Anyway, Andrew, thanks Thanks for that. I guess we'll have to head down to the fairgrounds and ask Larry ourselves. Why are you doing this with a bunch of kids? I don't know.
Welcome back to the 208 and welcome back to the Western Idaho Fair. KTVB is hanging out live here all evening long. Come on down, find our booth, say hello. You can win some prizes for knowing a little bit of KTVB trivia. And spoiler alert, you don't really need to know the answers. We'll give you prizes anyway. And if you do come down, it's a gorgeous evening. You can see nothing but sunshine here. There was some crazy weather at the fair earlier this week. Nothing of the sort tonight. Let's take a look around the region. Four different vantage points as far as that weather goes. We see lots of blue sky, a few puffy clouds. Temperature have risen into the low 90s across much of the Treasure Valley. It's warm everywhere, but a little warmer than average, but not scorching. We've definitely had hotter fairs in the past. So as we look ahead to the rest of the evening, your Western Idaho fair cast. It'll be pretty comfy by 9 o'clock as that sun is setting. We'll be in the low 80s. Picture perfect with clear skies overhead. Still in the 70s at 11 o'clock. So the smoke has been relatively light today, but as we look at our smoke forecast, all of it will likely be pushed out of the region by tomorrow afternoon, courtesy of that flow out of the south that will take all of that smoke from western Washington and western Oregon and send it packing up to the north. So if you see any haze outside your window today, it'll likely be clearer tomorrow. Okay, big picture of our satellite and radar shows a pretty quiet afternoon. We've had a few thunderstorms bubbling up in far southern Idaho, not far from the Magic Valley today, and that could cause some problems for folks there. But across the Treasure Valley, Central Mountains, it looks like it should be smooth sailing for the next 24 hours. However, tomorrow as Friday comes in, there's a chance we could see a couple of isolated showers and thunderstorms. Nothing to cancel plans over, but still those could linger into Saturday before things really dry up and heat up by the end of the weekend. Speaking of heating up, let's look at our high temperatures for tomorrow. We'll see things almost on par with today. Generally upper 80s, low 90s across the Treasure Valley, right around 90 for most spots. Over in the Magic Valley, upper 80s, flirting with that 90 degree mark in places like Twin Falls and then mid to upper 70s in the mountains with mostly clear skies until and unless those storms develop. And then we might see, of course, some clouds come into the picture. Quick round of rain and maybe some lightning strikes tomorrow evening and afternoon. As we look ahead at our seven day forecast, nothing but sunshine for the Boise area for the next week or so. Again, outside of that slight chance of a storm late Friday, maybe even a rain shower early tomorrow morning. So a few clouds coming into the picture Friday. But otherwise, look at the heat that starts building by the end of the weekend into early Early next week, we'll see mid 90s by Monday, Tuesday. If that's too much for nearing September, hey, look at Wednesday. We've dropped right back down to 83 with a cool breeze and lots of sun. So that's your seven day outlook. The outlook for the Western Idaho Fair is that it's going to be warm but clear and really comfy this evening. So come on down, come get a pronto pup or an Idaho ice cream potato and say hi to us at the KTVB booth. You know, saving the salmon has been a controversial Northwest debate for decades. The number of fish that return every year to spawn in Idaho's waters has dropped to, well, pretty much depletion levels. What used to be millions is now only thousands. Back in early 2021, Idaho Congressman Mike Simpson unveiled a plan to save the salmon, a $33.5 billion idea, which includes breaching four dams on the Lower Snake River. About the same time, the Nez Perce tribe, or the Nimipu, began working on a salmon saving scheme of their own. A documentary that would show how much the fish means to their people and how much of what they've done so far to restore the population, well, really hasn't done much. The 60 minute doc was released last fall and made its Boise debut last night to a sellout crowd. And after the viewing of the film, Shannon Wheeler, the chairman of the Nez Perce tribe, well, he took questions from the audience about the film and about this drastic idea to keep salmon from going extinct. Well, maybe a drastic idea, but it's certainly not a new one. The involvement of the Nimipu isn't new either. They've relied on fishing the Northwest Rivers for thousands of years, and it's something guaranteed by the federal government, by the way, thanks to the treaty with the tribe in 1855. But that access, that has dwindled significantly, thanks to continued loss of land and the abuse of it. Then when the dams came in in the 1950s, the 60s, and the 70s, well, that began a decades-long drastic decline of the actual fish to be found. 
and they've spent millions of dollars on smaller ideas that haven't worked, we're told. Well, the Covenant of the Salmon People asks, why not try a big one? It goes back to the beginning. Both the documentary and the connection between the Nimipu and the fish that sustain them. The salmon was the first to stand up and give himself to the people for nourishment and for survival of, of the new people that were coming. When he stepped forward to give himself, he obligated himself to us. And in turn, the Nimipu obligated themselves to the salmon. It's been that way for more than 16,000 years. The film is called Covenant of the Salmon People because it is a covenant with, with nature, with, with the land itself. Here we are trying to hang on to our sacred ways. But these days... And our foods are diminishing. Tribal leaders feel humans are not holding up their end of that bargain. And in this case, um, the Industrial Revolution and the creation of the Columbia River System of Operations that really has decimated the salmon runs coming in, the wild salmon runs uh, back into the, these waters and Nesperus waters uh, that we share with the United States and Idaho. When you say decimated, give me, like, what does that mean? Well, historically, 16 million salmon came into the Clem mouth of the Columbia River and, you know, over two million uh, came into the to the Snake River, and now and we're lucky to get, you know, 40,000, 50,000 fish. So the biggest reason is the dams. That's what that's what our science says. There are fewer than 50 fish on the spawning grounds in the best habitat in the United States for these fish. The purpose of the Covenant of the Salmon People. There's about 3,500, 4,000 tribal members, and we caught maybe 1,000 fish. So a quarter of a fish per person, if you look at it that way. Is to highlight that obligation and mark this point in time as one of no return. The fish really have maybe a couple generations before we start losing species, before we start losing uh, uh, one tributary at a time. Their generations or yours? To their generations, eight to 10 years. Speaking for the tribe, Shannon Wheeler believes it's about time to breach the dams on the Columbia and Snake Rivers. The dams really are the largest cause of man-made mortality. 50% of the fish die. Since we finally have the means and the technology. And if we can build a better, stronger, smarter Pacific Northwest, then that's what we should do. Because if nothing is done. Now we're only left with just a handful of places that have the numbers of salmon that we can still actually fish and continue that way of life. It won't just be a native way of life. And so when uh, a species like salmon are to go away, that's the beginning of uh, the death of our people. That will be lost. Now more than ever, our voice needs to be amplified for salmon and for the rest of the environment. So we tell our story and our obligation to the salmon, and we just want people to understand that, you know, we're working every day, every day to save the salmon. Shannon says saving the salmon is also an obligation of the United States of America, thanks to that treaty from 1855, Article 3 of that treaty. The documentary, Covenant of the Salmon People, will be shown tonight at the Sun Valley Opera House, if you missed it last night. It'll then be in Sandpoint next Wednesday. It will be back in Boise, scheduled to be back in Boise at Boise State University on September 14th.
All right, final moments of this Thursday show. Let's take a look at some of the comments you sent in today. Not too many today, a little light on the comments, but this is with regard to residency of elected officials and uh, Shiva uh, Rajbandari, who has moved out of state to go to college, but still declares and claims that Boise, Idaho is his permanent residency. Don't our U.S. representatives and senators effectively live full time in Washington, D.C., so therefore they would not be residents of Idaho? Well, it's a little different. Obviously, they still live here. That's where their residency is. But we elect them to send them back there. That's where the job is. So they kind of have to go there to do it, which is kind of the point. Different situation, but still kind of, I guess, along the same lines. Brian, a county fair is for kids. The state fair is also for open class farmers, ranchers who are breeders for the kids' livestock. It's the Western Idaho Fair, not the whole, I don't, I don't know. That's why I wanted to ask him. We'll see you tomorrow.